Hello everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a game played between Takahashi Michio and Oyama Yasuharu played in the 48th Juni A-Class Tournament on January 10th, 1990. Oyama chooses a Nakabisha rather than fourth file rook, which is the opening he was most famous for. If you study modern games, the great majority of the Nakabisha are with the pawn on 5-5, five five. but here as black has already played 5-6 pawn earlier, it can only go to 5-4. This was the way most were played back then. Let me show you what I mean by that. like this. Takahashi was one of the strongest players of his generation and at his height was a multiple time champion and even a two crown title holder. He has the distinction of being the last Judon, which means ten Don, a title holder, and he wasn't allowed to defend it. The next year it became defunct and changed the Ryuo title which we are familiar with today. It was a shame that they didn't allow him to play a match as reigning champion in the first uh, Ryuo match for the sake of fairness and continuity. At the time this was played, he wasn't holding any titles, but two years later, he would be challenging the reigning Meiji Nakahara to a match for the title. Ultimately, he was not successful in this, but came very close, losing 3-4. to four. It turned out that the Judon was the last title he ever held. The silver is well placed for attack and defense, not blocking the bishop's diagonal like it would be on 6-6, six, six, and supporting a possible push on the fifth file or to harass the bishop. Defense-wise, it could also be pulled back to 7-3 to bolster the castle, using two silvers instead of two golds. Due to the rook being on 5-2, it prevents the normal development of the left gold in making a mino. This can be solved with 5-1 gold and then 6-2 gold or uh, maneuvered to 6-7, usually via 7-8 here and here. Takahashi was well known for playing solidly, sometimes using four-piece castles, then aiming for light sabaki, something necessary when a castle is so solid. Stylistically and being great at defense, he had similarities to Morishita, though maybe in sporting terms Takahashi was stronger. Oyama was famous for his handling of the golds. Usually golds are associated with being part of the castle, but here it takes the place of a silver. It's definitely not often played against the Anaguma either then or now. Aiming to trade off pawns on the file, then develop the knight behind the rook. There we go, a four-piece castle. 
Takahashi got what he wanted out of the opening and stands better. He has a pawn in hand and developed his right side knight. One of the disadvantages of playing Furibisha is that it's much more difficult to develop the left side knight due to the bishop. In chess, it's similar when playing the French with the problem of the light squared bishop. When Ibisha uses a boat castle against Furibisha's Mino, the disadvantage of the knight is lessened due to having the more solid castle, but here it's Ibisha who is more solid. Preparing to reposition the bishop to a more active square. Pinning the bishop. Uh, aiming at the rook. Notice it took a lot more effort on the part of Huribisha to get his attacking knight into play compared with black's right side knight. Now here, Takahashi had a very strong move, 3-2 uh, pawn, uh, giving him an advantage. Uh, this is stronger than what he played, uh, which was 6-6 six, six pawn. Moving the gold closer to the king so it will be more useful when the fighting starts. And now again, uh, Takahashi had the light Tetsuji 3-2 pawn. And if 6-3 gold. I have 4-5 pawn now. And then just 3-5 bishop. So instead of that 3-2 token, uh, better for black. In the game, he played 3-5 pawn, uh, which led to an unclear game. The side that stands worse usually welcomes complications, and Oyama is more than up to the task. After this, white is able to wiggle his way out tactically, and the position becomes unclear. And now if 3-4 uh, pawn, and he takes the knight without promoting, this is better for white. Instead of 3-4 pawn, 2-6 rook. At first it looks like black just wins a knight. A knife 4-6 uh, pawn. Uh, this was better than what Oyama played, and it ends up being about even. played 6-5 pawn. If rook takes and the knight falls, so he played 6-8 bishop. And now if 2-3 rook, uh, this is about even. Uh, he played 5-5 five, five bishop instead. And now if 3-4 pawn, uh, this is a little better for black. go back. Instead of that, Takahashi played 5-6 rook.
uh, instead of this, um, six six knight was also possible. I already played five four pawn. So this is a little better for white. Uh, he could have also taken the lance. Stopping the token from being made. How did white continue? Promoted the pawn. Uh, nope, it didn't stop it. Because after he takes, he just drops behind the pawn. One of the big differences between chess and shogi that gives chess type games much of their distinctive flavor are the pawns. In chess, pawns can block each other and form interlocking chains. Whereas in shogi, due to pawn movement and drops, situations are much more fluid. Now, if black tries to stop the token from going to 6 9, like with 6 8 gold, for instance, then white could follow up by uh, 6 6 knight. like this or you could play five six pawn and then six six knight uh, both are good for white uh, so in the game he played four three token and now if five six knight this was uh, stronger than what Takahashi plays um, as it goes into a semi Instead of taking the token, it's six four pawn. Uh, like this. Or six nine gold. This is a little better for white. I noticed in this variation, uh, because it was a semi, black was getting a lot of uh, counterplay. Uh, compare that to what happened in the game. I played 4-4 four, four, horse. And now what did Oyama play next? Five four gold drop. This strikes me as a very Oyama like move. It's difficult to play moves like this because they don't directly attack the king and it isn't so close to white's own king and the gold could end up easily becoming a target later on. The main aspect is that it slows down black's attack by pushing the attacking horse away and creating thickness. After doing this both golds also work well on the board as we will see. Uh, advancing an attacking piece and also making room for the gold in anticipation of 4 4 token. The gold that began its journey on 4 1, then to 5 2, 4 3, 5 3, and 6 4 finally falls from the board, but his place is filled by his comrade in arms who takes up the banner in its stead. When the defensive knight moves up in the Anaguma, it's a serious structural weakness. 8-6 pawn. Throwing in this preliminary move opens up a hole on 8-7 and will always be useful. It makes Aji and in Japanese could be described as Son no Naite. Uh, 
Uh, now if 27 pawn is to stop the rook from promoting, uh, then 76 rook. If silver takes, Uh, this is winning for white. After 8-7 knight drop, instead of uh, silver takes, if 8-9 king. Uh, winning for white. Uh, in the game, instead of 2-7 pawn, Takahashi played 5-4 token. Threatening to drop a knight or a pawn on h7. With the rook on the back rank, the structural weakness of the Anaguma due, due to the knight moving up, as well as the hole on h7, is painfully apparent. If now 6 9 pawn, then just uh, 6 7 knight. Instead of that, he dropped the gold on 8 9. And how did white follow up? 6-6 six, six, knight. Knight attacks against golds can be particularly severe, especially when the gold is forced to advance diagonally. In the case of a silver, it would still be defending diagonally backward, but in contrast, the gold will leave weaknesses in its wake. If he takes a knight, 7-8 silver, just dropping in an undefended space is winning for white. And instead of that, he played 8 5 knight. Eight seven pawn. All thanks to the earlier pawn sack on move 130. Calmly building up strength before the final thrust. And after this, Takahashi resigned. If the rook takes, Uh, before we go, we should take one more look at the left gold's peace path. So from 4 1 to 5 2 to 4 3 to 5 3 and then finally to 6 4. Thank you for joining me today. Any questions or comments can be left down below. If you learned something from this, please give the video a like. Remember to subscribe and let others know about this channel. If you'd like to further support the channel with donations, you can do so by clicking on the Streamlabs link down in the description. Donations are not necessary, but are always welcome. I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.